Hey, what is going on, everybody? I'm Noah Kravitz from TechnoBuffalo.com, and I've got a quick recap for you of the day's news from E3, focusing on two of the heavyweights in the gaming industry, Sony and Nintendo. Uh, big product announcements coming from both of them. Sony, the newest portable, the NGP is now officially called the PlayStation Vita. Reminds me of La Dolce Vita, not a gaming system, but whatever, PlayStation Vita. And then the PS3 3D monitor, very interesting, uh, with a unique... 3D exclusive, I think they're calling it, a unique feature there. Also, Nintendo finally taking the wraps off of what was codenamed Project Cafe is now officially called the Wii U. And yes, there is a display in the controller. And a little bit of, a, I don't know if you want to call it controversy, but something a little strange happened at the press conference. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, first off, you can check out all of our E3 coverage over on the website. John Renger is actually at E3 today. Hopefully we'll get some hands-on time with some of these hot new products and report back from the show floor, and uh, our man Jack has been doing a bang up job covering E3 from afar, keeping everybody up to date on all the product announcements, new games, new features, all the stuff going on with Microsoft yesterday, Sony, Nintendo today, so check out their coverage for sure for more on all this stuff. Uh, but to get back to it, Sony, PlayStation Vita, portable device, 5 inch OLED uh, screen, capacitive touchscreen, super high res 960 by 544 on a touch screen. Uh, the device itself is said to be kind of large but actually feel really nice. Apparently um, it's it's solidly made but it's lightweight and so that sort of mitigates a little bit how large it is because a five inch display with the controllers on either side that's a pretty big device. Uh, but you've got the five inch display on the front, capacitive touch screen, and then you've got another touch panel around back on the back side. So kind of like the Motorola kickflip phone if any of you know that phone. Touch screen on the back and then you can reach around for additional controls. That looks gross. I shouldn't do that. Additional controls on the back side. And then of course you've got your regular controls, dual, an dual analog stick, uh, D-pad, your four button array, and then your top trigger buttons as well, and then all kinds of sensors in the device. The uh, six axis sensor system with a gyroscope, an accelerometer, uh, and also a digital compass. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi built in, you've got Bluetooth, you've got GPS. Again, there's an, uh, an AT&T model that will have 3G. The U.S. pricing, 250 and 300 for Wi-Fi and 3G, respectively. Not uh, Different prices for different countries abroad as well. Uh, launch date, I forgot to mention, is uh, towards the end of this year. Holiday 2011 is what we're hearing. Um, but then you've also got front and rear cameras on the device. So that just opens up all kinds of possibilities for all kinds of interesting games. You know, regular controlled games, uh, games that use the touchscreen, games that use that back uh, back touch panel games that use the motion sensors for you know steering or force feedback whatever have you but then augmented reality games could use the camera the you know the outward facing camera that forward facing camera you could do all kinds of stuff with screenshots or possibly video chatting or even you know talking trash to people with video while playing the games i mean who knows i'm just i'm making stuff up here but uh a lot going on with that device and it's powered by an arm cortex a9 processor with four cores so that's a quad core product quad-core mobile gaming product. A lot of pixels to push around that screen, but a lot of horsepower to do it, plus a, se a separate GPU. And uh, apparently, from what I've heard from folks at the show, uh, it's living up to the hype, at least in pre-production demo mode. The screen is apparently just gorgeous. Uh, you know, some some glitches here and there in the software, but it's all just, you know, it's trade show stuff. It's not, it's not in final form yet, but apparently the screen uh, looks really, really nice. OLED known for very very vivid colors that pop, very high contrast ratio, uh, so sort of lends itself well to gaming. You know, uh, OLED is a popular display technology in the cell phone world, so uh, it makes sense, you know, that it would be there on the PS Vita. So, exciting news from Sony coming out there, and also the uh, PlayStation 3D monitor, this is pretty interesting. This will be out in the fall, October, November time frame we're hearing, uh, and really seemingly aimed at the college crowd. Uh, given that they, on the show floor, recreated the dorm room from uh, Animal House, the classic college movie, to show this thing off. But at any rate, it's a 24-inch monitor, 1080p resolution, 3D, comes with an HDMI cable, a copy of the game Resistance 3, and one set of active shutter 3D glasses. You can purchase additional, it's 500 bucks, you can pur purchase additional glasses for $69 each. So a two-player setup is going to run you, you know, close to $600 with tax and everything. And the deal with this monitor is that it's not just 3D, but it has this exclusive technology uh, that Sony has some patents on uh, multi-person 3D multi-picture viewing. 
and this seems to be the first fruits of uh, those patent labors. And what it is is you can have two people playing, and you can either both be looking at the same 3D image, or you can have a split screen setup where you each have your own image, and you see your image only in 3D. So it's not like some kind of crazy thing where you've got competing 3D views going on, but apparently there's technology. The glasses actually have a button, I guess, to let you switch between viewing modes. But you can see, you know, either the shared view or just your view in 3D. Uh, sounds pretty cool. Sounds like one of those things like, well, split screen gaming has been around for a while and 3D gaming has been around for a while. Why, why didn't anybody else think of this sooner? They probably did, but Sony held the patents. At any rate, uh, again, you know, first, uh, first eyes on reports from the show floor say it seems to work pretty well. We'll have to see what kind of games are developed for it and how it works when it's actually out in the wild in, you know, production production run format and not just these uh, one-off demos on a show floor. But kind of an interesting thing they're building on that line of PlayStation accessories. The uh, 3D monitor, again, you get the monitor, you get one game, you get one set of glasses and an HDMI cable, 500 bucks. And you can use it uh, not just for these exclusive, you know, these games with the, the exclusive viewing mode, but you can use it for any 3D content apparently. So you can have one monitor, use it for your PlayStation, use it for 3D movies, you know, hook it up to your PC, all that kind of stuff. Now back to Nintendo. They took the wraps off of what was being called Project Cafe, the code name. And uh, now it has the official name Wii U. Capital W-I-I -I space capital U. Wii U. It's their next generation gaming console. It's going to be out sometime in 2012. No specific date was given. No pricing was given. Uh, and the deal is that the console steps it up with um, an IBM processing unit, multiple cores from their power line. Apparently it's the same proce processor technology used in the Watson supercomputer that recently went on and won Jeopardy. So got some brains behind it. Full 1080p gaming. Um, you know, it's said to have the horsepower right now to surpass what a PS3 or an Xbox 360 can do in terms of just pure, you know, uh, pure graphics performance. You know, we'll, we'll have to see, you know, how that bears out and by the time it comes to market what rumors there might be about the next gen of those consoles. But no matter. Nintendo's stepping it up. Full 1080p gaming, you know, kind of taking that Wii thing. I'm not a huge gamer, but, you know, I have a Wii and even I know, you know, I, I love Nintendo's quirkiness and I love their gameplay and, and they're so inventive and innovative, but the graphics on Wii leave a lot to be desired. So it's great to see them stepping it up in the graphics regard. And then in terms of the quirkiness and innovation, I mean, potentially a whole new level here with the controller. The controller on the Wii U has a screen in it, just like all the rumors said. It's a 6.2 inch touch screen. Apparently it's not multi-touch, but single touch. No resolution uh, specs given on the display, but people on the show floor said that it looks pretty good. So it's a 6.2 inch display, widescreen, 69 aspect ratio, inside of a controller that has your standard thumb controls on both sides. So you've got dual analog sticks, You've got a D-pad, you've got buttons, you've got more buttons on top, you know, all the buttons. You've got all the motion control sensors. You've got a camera, you've got a microphone, you've got stereo speakers, you've got rumble, uh, vibration feedback in the, in the controller. You've got a sensor strip, and it's got a stylus. So, I mean, literally just about every form of input imaginable, you know, like we were saying about the PlayStation Vita, it goes up a notch with the stylus and the... Uh, the sensor strip as well. And in the demos they showed off, you know, you've got all kinds of different scenarios where you're playing the game on the main screen and then you've got additional information on your touch screen, you know, for managing your arsenal of weapons or seeing player stats or if it's sports game controlling your lineup, you know, power-ups, whatever it is you're doing, right? So you can each have, you know, every player can have one and do their own thing. Or you're playing a game, somebody else wants to watch TV, transfer the game, you're now playing the game on the local screen. Uh, the thing itself can't be, the controller can't be used as a portable gaming device, the games all get beamed from the console to the controller. But apparently you can just, you know, play the game on the controller so you don't have to use the TV. Uh, and you can take it around the room. They showed somebody doing a Wii Fit kind of thing where they were tracking just on the controller so they didn't have to be in front of the TV as long as they were within wireless range of the console. Where it gets really interesting though is in demos they showed that kind of split the gameplay up between the main big screen, the controller screen, and even another controller because the, uh, the Wii U will support all legacy Wii controllers. So they showed a golf game where the main, you know, the, the golf course is on the main screen. The controller has the golf tee on it, set it down on the floor, 
take one of the Wii controllers, the Wii remotes, use that as your golf club, stand over the controller, line it up with the virtual tee, swing, and then you see the ball go, go on the mainstream. Swing! Uh, anyway, another demo showed where uh, the controller was a rifle sight, snapped into a plastic rifle you know, accessory, and uh, you're lining up your target on the main screen, but you're seeing it through the new Wii U controller with that 6-inch screen, that's your rifle sight, and you line it up. So all kinds of potential there for really uh, clever, interesting games. And the thing with Nintendo, again, not being a huge gamer of knowing this much, is, you know, is it going to be that the first-party games, that all the good games are Nintendo, all the innovative ones, all the clever ones, or are third-party developers really going to take this system? Will Nintendo give them what they need? Will the developers, developers want to do it? And really come up with some really cool, innovative games for this new system that aren't just from Nintendo. Not to say that, you know, we don't want to see the, uh, the next generation of the Mario franchise and the carts and, you know, all the great Nintendo franchises on the new system, but it would be great to see some, uh, some really cool third-party franchises take advantage of these new control systems as well. So that's the big news from Sony and Nintendo. Nintendo, the Wii U with the crazy controller with the screen in it. Sony's got the 3D monitor set up for PlayStation and the PlayStation Vita which is what the NGP is now officially called. Sony stuff coming out later this year, Nintendo sometime next year. And the little bit of, you know, sort of controversy I mentioned real quick is that uh, apparently during the Nintendo press conference they showed off game footage uh, as part of introducing the Wii U. They showed off little snippets of titles. After the fact, a Nintendo exec went on record saying, oh yeah, those weren't Wii U games we showed. That footage was from Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. There are no Wii U titles that are far enough, uh, far enough along that. The system's not going to be out for a year. How could we have any titles? But we wanted to show what titles are coming, so we showed footage from the other console. I don't know. Does that matter? Is that a lame move because they weren't up front about it? Or is it fine because they mentioned it afterwards and you know those titles are coming? Does it even matter? I don't know. Just throwing it out there. I'm just reporting the news. So let us know what you think. Hit the website for much, much more coverage on all of this stuff and then some of all the other stuff going on at E3, Microsoft's announcements yesterday, all the other business going on. Let us know in the comments, let us know on the website, let us know on Facebook and Twitter. What do you think? Are you excited for Wii U? Could you care less? Do you want a PlayStation Vita? Or is portable gaming, does it not matter because your Droid or your Xperia Play or your iPhone, you know, the games are good enough and they're fun enough that you can use that for portable and then do your hardcore gaming when you're back home on the console. What do you think? You're the herd. Let us know. For Techno Buffalo, I'm Noah Kravitz. Much, much more on the Techno Buffalo site, the YouTube channel, all the usual places. We'll see you later. Bye bye.